So I have my candle candle season if you um, would like to burn some natural beeswax, something that you can breathe safely. Um, it can be nice, especially when it's dark in the daytime like it is today. You can put it out in front of you or somewhere that you can just enjoy its light and warmth. Let's do a little mindful coming into seated. You can do this on a blanket if you would like. And if you're already settled, still pick up the leg that's closest to you, close your eyes, and just feel yourself mindful. Take that leg out, stretch it out, and support it with your arms, using your arms to sit tall. Reach through your toes, stretching the top of your foot. So point your toes, point your foot. Relax your foot. Leaving the fingers behind the leg helps hold its heaviness. Draw back on your foot and spread your toes gently. Take a breath. Relax your foot, exhale. Circle your ankle a few times in a loving way. Begin that cultivation of loving compassion towards yourself. Relax your ankle. Knee comes next. Fold your knee in and out a couple of times. Grateful. Mindful, I love you, I'm taking care of you. I witness the miracle of you kind of stuff. And then up to the hip, it's all connected and it all starts up here. So you may do a little cradle if you like before you settle your leg down, relaxing open from the hip. Sometimes taking this time can really move over to the other side. This time, wave your fingers, can really help you develop your seating pose. Point foot first, sit tall. Like you're in boat pose here, but with support from your arms. Relax your foot, exhale. Draw back on your toes. Relax, exhale. Circle both directions slowly and lovingly a few times. Ankles, hello. All of this connected. Relax your ankle. Look at your knee, move your knee. When you close that hand right in on itself, that's the safest way. That's how it's meant to work. So we do a lot of that to protect in yoga. Mindfulness of knee and then hip, maybe a little cradle side to side. And then relax hip externally. Whatever that is for you, you may slide blocks under your legs, whatever you need for support. So now we've set our foundation. Feel your sitting bones. Try to center yourself and then come up the center with your awareness, tracing the center line of your body. Just feel your spine and those energy places along the center. Trace with your awareness. And gently hugging your navel towards your spine. Relax your hands and your legs, taking five breaths in even waves. Downward soft eyes or closed eyes. So if you have your candle, you can have it right out in front of you for that steady presence. Like we are, when we are still, there's still that flickering of the breath. There's that movement of the breath. And just fluid and centering, one more inhale. One more exhale. Bring your hands together into Pranamasana pose. So that is heart, heart center, but away from your body, lifting the elbows. So it's an active press evenly with the hands. That's one of our themes on the equinox is evenness. It's this beautiful pause in evenness today. Same breathing. Same pressing. This time, exhale with some sound if you would like to enjoy that vibration of a hum or an om. Inhale deeply, slowly. Um. Sit in, settle your arms and hands into your body. 
A little bow down. Let your neck leak in. Head to heart. You have a, a new beginning of a new season if you want to start ascending something in that direction. Something you're letting go of. Something that you're welcoming during this change. Acknowledging anything that's hard for you as well. So it's like we're we're saying, I hear you to ourselves in our practice. We are listening to our hearts. And let's open our hearts with a bow pose. Pick up the bow, stretch hands away, fists, and adding the twist. Keep your belly long and relaxed. Look back three, five times. Grounded in the legs. Opening across the front body. Just the right amount, fluid and smooth. Last breath, add a little bit more if you would like, just gently increase the pose. Exhale, let go of your hands, arms, spine, center. Other side, long relaxed belly is important. Stretch the arms away from each other and work your way into that look back twist. Steady your eyes to help steady your brain. So our bodies might begin in a restless way and our brains in a fluctuating way. Be patient, use the practice to settle yourself. Be at one with this shape, one more breath, just one. So enjoy, make it yours, make it sweet. Let it take care of you and release it in permanent mindful release back to center. Leaning back, it's fine to stay on your blanket. Now last in a pose, the Kardarangari, bring the feet together, knees apart, but keeping the feet flat on the floor, bring them as close in as they will come. And here's where to start, is hugging your knees. You do that in some ways, sitting up tall, feeling the balance and sameness of this pose. Sameness of breath may stay as you are. Optional to reach your arms through. It's fine to let your spine round here, like in a cat spine, the lower back becomes rounded, reaching through. The legs press back into the arms and you can add the palms pressing. Let's just take five breaths from wherever you have come that feels good in your body. And you send your attention to places in your body throughout the practice where you feel activity or any sense of feeling stuck. Breathe into it. Three, four, just try to find the equalness of arms and legs pressing into each other. Last breath. Equalness of hands and feet. Exhale. And release. Make a mindful transition to your hands and knees, please. You might mix up how you do these things from time to time. Feel free to spread your blanket across your mat and your knees if you need it there. And we'll come up to kneeling before we get settled so that we can find this um, Tops of feet grounding, shoulders open, heart spreading a little bit. And give your wrists and hands a moment of awareness and flow. We did with our feet, so important, so grateful, so many miracles in one place. And find that lovely outward spiraling energy of the hands. That helps us do the same with our shoulders. So bring the hands to the earth. They have these lovely springs. If you press your fingertips a little bit, you can feel the arches of the hands awaken. Try to relax your palms, circle down, and relax your thumbs. Then waves of breath, extend your spine. Leave the low back pretty steady for cow spine. And cat spine round. Doing this four more times with a great deal of mindfulness. 
I realize that sometimes I do this kind of automatically without really paying that much attention to it. Pay attention to just the right amount so that it's caring for your body and the steady attention helps your mind find a place to rest. Sound of the breath filling the ears like an ocean. Last exhale. Neutral spine, look back at your right foot. Breathe steadily. Fourth breath. And fifth breath, gently find some space in that side body. Release it slowly. Side body likes that slow release. And look back towards your left foot. And that's gonna lengthen out the right side of your torso. Bring your spine into side flexion. Let's try to let your whole body participate in each shape. Fourth breath, perhaps feeling the low backs release and find some space, some length there, some softness. Slow release to center, or tuck your toes under if you can. It's okay to leave that out if you need to. Go back towards your, your heels with your hips and reach your arms out long, elbows up, head down. Quarter dog pose, resetting the toes can be a really nice thing to do for yourself if you need it. Rest your hands open. Big breaths, forehead can rest all the way on the floor. You find yourself in all these places with a new perspective. Just let your brain ground here, earth energy, And exhale one more time. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Pull your hands in a little closer. Keep your toes tucked and lift up your knees. Walk your toes in a little bit if you need to and then settle your heels downward. Attention if you need to reset your hands. Outward shoulders, outward hands. Head down. Belly draws up. First one, patient, just focusing on evenness and steadiness in this pose today. Gradually letting the legs straighten out. Inhale, like you're coming out, just a little bit, and then exhale, bow back in. See if you can reach your heart a little more towards the earth. Transition to standing, walking forward with a mindful way. Pick yourself up and walk the rest of the way. Roll your shoulders back and empty out your coat sleeves. Bring your thumb to your lower two fingers, the pinky and ring fingers in both hands. Stand comfortably wide with an open heart. This is the earth mudra, this gesture, this yoga in your hands. And what we're going to practice is a little bit of inhalation that moves downward and exhalation that moves upward. So it's a brain and breath exercise. So when you breathe in, think downward energy, think roots. When you breathe out, let the energy rise from the earth to the sky. Practice that twice more. Inhale, you can think of yourself as a tree. Breathe down into the earth. Exhale, breathe out to the sky. One more time. Unifying these opposite energies. Exhale, skyward. You let activate your crown chakra at the top of your skull. Then bring your hands together. 
Inhale, lift your arms up into a V, the victory pose. Long in your low back, so lift your back ribs. Then lift, tip your heart up a little bit and reach to our radiant star for five breaths. Strong and steady. This is a mountain pose variation. Looking simple, but not easy. Very important. One of our key practices is this reaching up movement. One more breath, victory pose. And then bring your hands together and bow slowly towards the earth. So we thank the radiant star. Hold in this gesture of thank you. Halfway lift, like you're going back up to see the sunrise. Spread your hands and your knees back to Palakasana, adding an elbow bend if you would like, if you're practicing that chaturanga. Knees may be down, of course. Upward dog, arms straight, so you can have a little moment, breathe a few times to find that shape. Tail tucking energy might be useful. Lift, take one more inhale. It's okay if it's tight and not easy the first time. Exhale, table, downward dog. If you prefer quarter dog, you may go to your knees. Stay symmetrical. So if you notice something asymmetrical, you can try to see if you can balance it out. I noticed one hand was further back than the other. I could feel it. And then just let it be what it is. This pose supports the strength of the whole body. It allows our brain to receive some fresh blood flow. And for the nectar of immortality to flow the other direction. Gently inverting ourselves. Exhale along the spine. So press your hands, reach your hips away. That find more space between them. Inhale, let your knees soften and step or hop forward and stretch the halfway lift. So we stretch that in breath and stretch the subsequent out breath down. Tuck your chin at the end of this pose. Stand up, use your legs. Back up to our victory arms with the heart lifting. Finish your inhale. Exhale, arms flow slowly into the sides of your body. Practicing your standing alignment here where your shoulders aren't going forward or back, but they're neutral. And you can breathe deeply. Wide arms this time, Surya Namaskara, radiant sun. Reach out like you're giving the sun a big hug. Arms wide again, send your heart forward and catch the back of your legs. Exhale, finishes as you come in. Hands to your shins, extending your spine like you're going up to peak at the sunrise. Exhale, bend, hands down, other leg back first if possible, hips low. You know, that's a lot of directions. Plank pose. Watch the exhale. Inhale, transition to upward facing dog. Strong, straight arms. Use your legs, gaze downward. Exhale, downward dog. Third one, maybe it's a little bit easier. The limbs support the lengthening of the spine. Finish out any refining and hold really steady for a few more breaths. Taking the last breath into the heart center, just trying to expand the center of your heart, with deep breathing and the sense of opening towards the earth. Shift forward and inhale. Fall forward, exhale. Standing up, hollow your breath, wide arms reach around. And exhale, float them down slowly into the side of your body once again and pause with the breath. You can do that. Inhale, earth, downward. Exhale, sky, upward. 
soon as the body is physically going down, you can think up. Three warrior vinyasa, right leg back to warrior A, not the biggest one necessarily, just a nice comfortable lunge with the hips towards the front, knee bending over the ankle or less. Empty out your coat sleeves, palms together out in front. Take your right arm and reach it up behind, beside your ear and then bend your elbow behind your skull. Gaze at your front hand. Hold steady. Smooth, steady breathing. Four. And then five. Release your right arm so it comes next to the other hand again. Inhale, pull your top arm. Right hand back along your chest, open your back foot, warrior B. Like we did in our seated bow pose, this is a, a bow practice again. Shoulders down, gently squeeze and activate your arms and hands. Not too much squeezing, just the right amount of everything. Four. Try to stay right as you are, even as you prepare for the warrior C. Just know that you're moving towards it in this variation. So come to the front of your mat, leave your back toes down, rest your palms or hold your waist, float up that back leg if you can. You can add the reaching forward in this if you want with one or both arms. Concentrate deeply, keep trying. Three, and five, come on down. Pause, let the, close your eyes, inward listening. So there's a sense of determination that needs to be turned on for some of these poses. Might as well start with the first, first warrior, get into a, just a open-hearted, determined mode. Determine to hold your arms out in front of your body with your hands together. Find your knee angle that's right. Steadiness of the eyes. And then take your left arm up beside the ear. Inhale. Exhale, bring that hand behind your skull, behind your neck. A little love into the hips and hip flexors as you release and strengthen there. Good breath. Bring the hands back together. B variation, pull the hands away from each other. And take up this fist, turn out the back toes. So I want to be variation looking forward. Remove any excess tension. Is your neck long, shoulders relaxed? Four, ready to release your arrow. Five, process and transition. So first that idea of letting it go forward, bring your back foot in, square to the front. There's a lot that happens. Like this is an alien compared to the other two. Do your best, five breaths. Four, don't give up easily. And five, come on out. Let me let a little joy come in. Like you did that. Feels good in your body. And then settle with an exhale. Bring yourself to the right side of your mat in the center. Legs together, feet together, if possible, just close this spine. Side bending over to the right side. Take your left hand to your, I'm sorry, your right hand to your thigh, and your left arm over to side bend. Just starting some moving practices. Sun, moon, earth. One more exhale. Just the right amount for you. 
Remember to let go of side poses with some slowness. Settle that left arm into the body, right arm into side bend to your own degree. So we have a nice steady foundation gathering up the center. You might activate Mula Banda a little bit, the pelvic floor toning in and up, helping you gather into the center. Fourth breath. Body all coming together in this variation. Exhale last time. Breathe in, gently release. Step your feet to Utkata Konasana, goddess pose. So it's a symmetrical turned out squat with wide legs. Find your center. Little refinement in the legs to find the sweet spot where it feels okay. Settle into the center. Nice open feet really helps create an openness all the way up to the hips. Try that. Exhale. Press your legs straight and swing out your heels. Breathe in, hands to the legs. Breathe out, slowly fold forward. You may bend your knees. You can start with knees bent, tip, then straighten legs. So however you can come in, taking care of your body. A, a variation, hands to the center, maybe with knees bent, head down. Butterfly, shoulders defy gravity in this pose. They rise up into the body, train them into the body. Four, release any gripping in your feet and lengthen the sides of your waist. Lengthen your spine. One last breath, centering. Using inhalation to come up, taking care of your body to do that. Then turning your left foot out to the side, triangle pose, reach out, breathe in, over and down, breathe out. Smooth transition with mindfulness, simple standing movements. Main cues here are the navel slightly in towards the spine and a long neck so that your shoulders are down off your ears. You may gaze forward or up. Forward breath. Exhale, reinforces navel to the spine. And fifth one. Rising up slowly, turn to face your left leg. So your back leg's going to turn in. Exhale into Parsvottanasana. Straight legs, forward fold. All of these poses challenge your balance every time. Use your determination to do your best. Transition slowly to Anjani Asana, bringing down your right knee to the floor. Come up to your left knee, shoulders relaxed. Guide your knee towards your toes to any degree. Keep eyes downward and have an optional upward reach. It's like the diving hand, stacking the hands and having them up it together. Wakes up the arms. One more deep breath. And release your arms and your leg. Side lunge, return your left toes towards that corner of the mat and use your arms to help you come around to the side lunge shape. You may come up to your bent knee or stay on the floor with your hands. Focus on steadiness. You can vary with your hands, fists and thumbs, but try not to strain the thumbs. Preserve your thumbs. One more deep breath. Exhale and then flow it over to the other side, the same shape. So give yourself a moment to find that turnout, that side lunge shape. Hands on the floor or on the bent leg. 
Concentrate upon this form. How does your body become more steady? How does your mind become more steady? Just gently invite both. Exhalation, last time. Time to transition to Anjanyasana, so turn to face that um, right side of your mat, <laughs> bring down your back knee, and find that low crescent lunge shape towards that back side of your mat, tucking your tail. You'd like to add those diving hands, reaching the arms up, you may downward gaze. Using your complete concentration. One more exhalation. Press your foot to release your leg and release your arms down, standing up. Hips stay facing the same side and coming into Parsvottanasana, side stretching pose. Once you're here, try to relax your feet. Reaching down the leg today. One more breath. Thank you for what you've taught me today. Now, triangle pose. We turn the back foot out to let the hips come to the side, reaching up and down now. Just the right amount. Cool practice on each side of the body, wherever that is. Rise up with your next inhalation. Turn to the goddess pose, legs again. Exhale down. Bring your thumbs to your third eye center and your elbows together. Holding steady. Today is also Elephant Appreciation Day, so elephant arms. Feel so how centering and grounding that is. Nice big open elephant feet. One more breath. Release your arms and legs. Step to center together. Side bend right. Exhale. Inhale. And side bend left. Exhale. Inhale, release. Coming into the top of your mat again for forward fold. So just give yourself a moment to extend out and down your legs for a stay. Rocking forward fold. You may hold your elbows or hold on wherever it feels good in your body. Letting yourself rock on your feet a little bit. Breathing steadily. Keep releasing the body into the shape, giving it time and space. One more exhalation. Hold steady as you finish that breath. And then bend your knees and bring down your hands. Come back to your knees for a moment and rise up. If you like to spread your blanket, you may just do the half moon pose on your knees today. So turning out your right leg from your hip. So you need a little bit of that side. Turn out the right leg. Bring both hands to the floor like tabletop. Lead your left leg straight out to the side. So. So we're trying to have the pelvis open to the side like triangle pose in half moon. If you'd like to add that reach up. Think about how symmetrical the half moon is in the sky. A little nod to that. that balance. Light and dark. One more breath. And let it be. Let it go carefully. Try the other side. 
So we start with hips front and we need to turn out. It's a little awkward to get that turn out from the knee. Be down your hands. Just try to be open across the front of your hips as we reach your leg back. Rounding your hand and your foot. Navel to spine, two. Try to find a little bit of that joy, possibly. And just doing your best, even if you never find a moment of stillness, it is fine. We'll try it one more time. Steady eyes and breath, determination. And exhale carefully. And come to seated. And you still sit on your blanket. Dandasana. Ardha Matsi Andasana. Bring your right leg and hold it in front of you. Left foot to the earth. Bring it around your knee to any degree. Use your arms to sit tall and close your eyes or downward eyes. Pausing with this foundation. And then breathe in, long, relaxed belly. Breathe out, twist towards your bent knee side. So your right hand can support your hip here, drawing in or resting out, which is neutral, all good. Twisting spine to look back. And other hand to the earth behind you, behind your waist, optional. Breathe slowly and evenly. Sama Spriti Pranayama. Even waves of breath. Let's try letting the inhalation inform the exhalation. So count your next inhale. And count your next exhale, just letting them balance each other. You may repeat that or not. One more time, slowly breathe. And slowly breathe out. Release your twist back to center with your torso. Take your top leg, bring it out for Janusasana. Just bring it right alongside the foot, it's already there, or you can spin around if you need to. One of our everyday kind of poses. So we have this little lateral, little twist as we come out over this leg. Relax down. Gently draw back the toes of your left foot. Balance out your breaths. That counting the breath kind of reminded me of like music, of waltz or something. That one, two, three, one, two. Find your rhythm. Challenging ourselves to go against the nature of the restless mind to find a state of consciousness that is present. We breathe out the last time. Take your time with it. Give yourself a little time to release out, especially if you've been in there deeply. Nice to just feel the letting go. And changing sides for those two poses, Ardha Matsya Andrasana, half Lord of the Fishes, is what this seated twist is called. It's trying to be elevated on, underneath your pelvis. Top foot coming around, sitting tall, holding on. Acknowledge the foundation. Breathe in, long belly. Breathe out, initiate your twist, support your top leg. Arm behind or wrapping around the waist. Look back. One. Exhale for two. Plenty of time for your breathing. And an impermanence, just one more time. 
Knowing that you're not going to be there forever helps you relax into what's happening in the moment. Release your twist and take out your leg, Jelly Shirsasana. Head knee pose, knee head pose is the translation. We say head to knee, so that lateral little rotation, reach out, come on down. Release to forwardness, let it calm your mind. Inhaling for three. And exhaling. Try to be in just the right place in your body where it feels positive. In this last breath, just focus on just letting the brain drop towards the earth. Relax your brain. Feel your breath and body. Last time, breathing out. Taking your time. Coming up slowly. And coming to your back, bringing with you any supports for the last part of practice. We'll stay on the ground, just got a pillow, you know, blanket, and an eye pillow. If you have something to cover your eyes, Krishna Asana, that can be really nice. We will start with a bridge pose duration, like supported fish, where we come to our backs. We we'll start by bringing in your knees, centering your skull, grounding that back center and grounding the back center of the skull. And bring your sacrum to the earth. So bring your knees up and up so you feel your sacrum down your skull and sacrum. Cranium sacrum. And then bring your feet all the way down to the floor in an easy, relaxed way. Cranium sacrum. All connected. One hand to your belly, one hand to your heart. Try to relax your arms on your body in those places. So it doesn't have to just be your hand, especially with the one at your heart center. It can be kind of floating. So ground your arms into yourself. One more exhalation. Heart and solar plexus. Release your arms to the sides and with your elbows out at your shoulder level and your hands up around your head level all on the floor. Centering skull, open feet. Breathe deeply five times. Rib cage breath. Inhale, breathe in all directions. Close your eyes so your focus is on your breathing. This time as you breathe in, think roots like we did on our feet. Inhale down to the earth, even as your breath rises. Exhale into the sky. Try that one more time. Inhale, earth. Exhale, sky. And the last breath, use your belly. Release your Uddiyana Bandha. Let your bandhas relax and breathe with your belly. Inhale, puff out your belly, puff out your ribs. And release. One more time, belly breath. Try to leave the ribs, let them do what they want. And 
And that's complete. Bring your arms beside you on the floor with your hands up. Bring your feet in close to your body and wide from each other. Lift up to bridge pose in a soft way that you can just hold open for a little while without too much effort. So stay away from any forcing. Using the structure of the body. Just try to find some sweetness. Here, if you need to support your low back, you can add in the bandhas awareness again. The mula bandha drawing in and up. Udhyana bandha navel towards the spine. That has a centering effect as well. And taking just one more breath. With a mindful coming down. Supported shoulder stand of legs up into the air. Maybe turning your palms over and sliding them under your hips a little bit. And then relax your hips on your hands. Just make sure it's not too much. Let your legs and feet rest together. So we're giving our pelvis the tiniest elevation here. Stay in your meditative state. This last 15 minutes, you may keep your eyes closed. But keep them very soft, whichever is more quieting for you. Take one more slow breath, feeling the legs up energy. Roll your, bring your legs towards your face a little bit to release your hands. And then take your ankles with your hands, bring your feet together, knees apart. Holding on for this variation of Supta Baddha Konasana, try to relax your hips externally, like when we are seated, relax them open. Hold on firmly to your ankles. Try not to let your chin pop up, keep your skull grounded. Third breath, just the right amount of depth. You can give yourself a pretty nice release of those muscles here. Just find that sweet place for that last breath. Soften it and release. Figure four shape with the left leg coming in. You may leave your foot on the floor. You may bring it into your chest. Find your own place of steadiness and sweetness in balance with each other. That's part of what we are working towards in the yoga is finding that balance of stira and sukha. Steadiness and sweetness. Groundedness and lightness. Effort and non-effort. A little brightness in your top foot helps protect your knee. This breaths are gentle and steady one more time. And exhale, bring down your foot. Without disturbing yourself very much, change your legs to the other side, meeting this side right where it is sweet and structured for this side of your body. Where you find ease and a good sensation. Observe the moment. Non judgmental, just compassionate and loving. Allowing yourself to feel joy if you get some good sensations, sense of peace. Welcome those feelings, celebrate them. 
with your acknowledgement. It's also okay to release other feelings in practice and to celebrate all of those feelings. Tears roll out the sides of my eyes on a regular basis in yoga. Let them go. Finish another breath. A little thank you to your body for that shape. Finishing with a twist over to the right side with both legs. Let this be your own favorite way of twisting a very restful, soft yin style twist. So in these last hours of the late summer season, just trying to store lots of prana into the body as we move into the, the exhale, the darkness, increasing our inner light. When you participate more fully in a posture, this causes prana to wake up throughout the entire body and flow through all of the nadis. The nadis are the little rivers of energy. When you expand your capacity to feel, to experience, to engage, and to know the spiritual dimension of life. Let us allow our bodies to find a shape on the other side and the twist that is suitable for this side. When we go this way, what's, what's different? What's the same? Working where you are, just rest with that idea of inviting the prana of the summer to stay strong inside of you and your heart and your solar plexus be full of light. Everything still except the breath. This time, soft, soft. With the exhale, concentrate the prana into the body, that vital energy, and disturbing yourself as little as possible. Come to Shavasana. A little bit of, of supporting your body with props, something somewhere. And cover yourself more. A brief period of attention, especially to the central channel, the sacrum and the cranium, and that line of spine in between. Try to find your center in that way. Let your arms and legs relax where they want to be. It can be helpful to lessen the rhythm of the breath with an open mouth exhale. Just let yourself thank that pattern for all the peace it brought your brain. And just let it let the breath become free to do it once again. And there it is. It's just floating there, right there, anytime you need it to pay attention to it. And that softness comes to the entire body, the brain, the eyes, the limbs, the muscles. Allowing prana to manifest in stillness. If you notice that you're gripping anything anywhere in your body, just bring your mind there and give it a loving let go.
The leaves are about to show us how beautiful it can be to let go. First moment of autumn recognized. Hills hate in the last cloud, however white. From brightest blue spills glitter of afternoon, more champagne than ever summer. Bubble and burst, sparkle in tang, taste tangle, tingle, delicious on tongue of spirit, joyful in eye beam. We know this to be no mere moment, however brief. However blessed, for moment means time, and this is no time, only the dream, untimed, between season and season. Let the leaf, gold of birch, of beech, forever hang, not vegetable matter, mortal, but in no whatsoever breath of air, no embedded in perfection of crystal, purer than air. You, embedded too in crystal, stand, you're being perfected at last, in the instant itself, which is unbreathing. Can you feel breath, brush your damp lips? How can we know? Allow gratitude for your spasana and your practice to radiate from that center, that light of your center, as you awaken movement and gradually sit again. A moment to notice your seat and to thank yourself for showing up and doing the work that allows you to find the seat. Thank you. Happy Equinox.